It is Wednesday morning, the 8th of October in Tokyo, Japan, and we are now following what is being officially called Super Typhoon Vongfong. Warning number 21 from the U.S. Joint Typhoon Warning Center has increased the initial sustained winds of Typhoon Vongfong to 155 knots, which is roughly 175 to 180 mile per hour sustained winds if you take the one minute average, and they are forecasting the maximum intensity to increase even further. Here we see the intensity forecast of 165 knots, which would be the equivalent of 190 miles per hour, making this easily a Category 5 if we were to go by the Atlantic Hurricane scale. And this is now rivaling Super Typhoon Haiyan last year. If you recall, that is the significant typhoon that was rather historical and caused much in the way of loss of life and damage across the Philippines. So this is a very dangerous typhoon that interests across southern Japan will have to closely follow over the next five days. Now the good news is that even based on this forecast, as the center of the typhoon moves into southern Okinawa and into the southern portions of the Japanese mainland, we are looking at the likelihood of significant weakening. But even if you take this forecast verbatim, it is still expected to be near 90 knots in terms of sustained winds as we go into the 12th. And that is still a moderately strong typhoon. And you still cannot discount the possibility that Vong Fong could still be a bit stronger than indicated. It may not weaken quite as much as the official forecast is showing. You need to remember that official intensity forecast, even from the JTWC, can be inaccurate at times. The intensity forecast is much harder to nail down than the actual track forecast. Nonetheless, in terms of that track, you can see that we are expecting a gradual bend more toward the north over the next one to two days, but toward the end of the forecast, we're still looking at a slight bend to the north-northwest, which is still putting southern Japan directly in the line of fire from Vongfong. Furthermore, the official typhoon warning agency in the Western Pacific is the Japan Meteorological Agency, and we still see very good track agreement between the JMA and the JTWC with a turn toward the north followed by a slight bend towards the north-northwest towards Kyushu. We are still in the very early morning hours, so we don't have the luxury of using the daytime visible satellite. But even using the nighttime standard infrared, you can see that we have a nearly perfectly symmetrical super typhoon. The eye is just about fully cleared out. You don't really see any asymmetry whatsoever involving Vong Fong at this hour. The enhanced infrared is even more impressive. You see very cold cloud tops fully wrapping around the eye. The only things that would make this any stronger would be if the convection or the cloud tops being shown here are even darker or colder, or if it begins to expand outward away from the eye, or if the dry air within the eye, as you can see here on the water vapor imagery, begins to expand even more. You can see over the last six hours that little dry spot that you see right in the middle of the eye is becoming more apparent, and the more that the eye becomes less cloud filled and more stable, that's actually an indication that Vong Fong is still intensifying. So this is nearly a textbook example of what a super typhoon at maximum intensity looks like. And we really don't see much in the way of dry air filtering into the typhoon just yet. So it is unlikely that Vong Fong is going to weaken significantly within the next one or two days. It's likely going to peak at around 165 knots over the next 24 hours and then likely start to max out at that point. It's really almost impossible for typhoons to become any stronger than what it already currently is. And as it moves more toward the north, it's going to start to interact with more in the way of southwest wind shear and dry air. And luckily, we won't have quite the monster that we're dealing with as Vong Fong starts to approach southern Japan. But still, like I said in the earlier part of the video, it is still going to be a very formidable typhoon that we have to monitor very closely. This is a look at the western Pacific water vapor imagery. We can see southern Japan along the northern part of the screen. And of course, you see super typhoon Vongfong well to the southeast of Taiwan. This is a very favorable environment for intensification. You see an upper level anticyclone as denoted by the outflow expanding outward away from the center of the circulation as far southwest as the Philippines, and not quite as far to the north and northeast, and that's a little bit thanks to this upper level low. But as we talked about in yesterday's video, this upper low is moving farther to the north, and the outflow, especially along the northern semicircle, is also expanding farther out over time. So this is a near perfect environment. Now in terms of steering, we see that there is one initial mid to upper level shortwave trough that is digging towards Japan, but this trough is not going to be strong enough to fully turn the typhoon to the northeast and out to sea. Instead, the trough will bypass the typhoon, 
and over the next three to five days we're expecting this anti-cyclonic motion here this is the mid to upper level ridge this upper level ridge is going to eventually expand more toward the west and northwest at least temporarily within three to five days and that is why as the typhoon turns toward the north it very well could make a bend back toward the northwest for a brief period before making its final turn to the northeast across the Japanese mainland as we take a look at a couple images given to us by the University of Wisconsin, the first one is the wind shear analysis, and this is a color representation of how strong the vertical wind shear is in the area. This is Japan, where the southwest winds are currently very strong and in excess of 80 to 90 knots of vertical shear, in fact. But as we look to the south, the blue colors directly over the typhoon indicate wind shear values 10 knots or less. So this is a very favorable environment. And as we mentioned before, as the typhoon moves more toward the north, it will start to become impacted by more in the way of southwest shear. As it moves toward the north, it's not going to be quite as strong a shear as you're seeing on the image at this time. But nonetheless, you're still going to be looking at shear in excess of 20 to 30 knots. And that's why we do expect at least somewhat in the way of weakening. In terms of sea surface temperatures across the western Pacific, this map shows yellow and orange areas where the water temperatures are favorable for intensification. Usually you're looking for water temps at or higher than 26 degrees Celsius, and we see the 26 degree isotherm does extend northward into Okinawa and far southern Japan. So it won't be until Vongfong turns completely towards the northeast that not only the wind shear but also the sea surface temperatures not to mention land interaction begins to really take its toll on Vong Fong. So as the center of circulation begins to approach Tokyo, we're going to look at a much weaker system by then. So the main focus will be on the southernmost island chains over the next three to five days. That is when the storm will still be at a relatively high intensity, but that's not to totally discount the overall impact and threat toward the southern and central part of the Japanese mainland as we're still going to be dealing with not only some fairly strong winds but heavy rainfall and the potential for flooding especially considering that we just had a typhoon landfall within the last few days. We already discussed the current steering mechanisms on water vapor imagery but just to give you a different representation of those steering winds and parameters we're looking at another image from the University of Wisconsin you see to the east of the typhoon we have that very large mid to upper level steering ridge Vong Fong is currently along the western periphery of that ridge and that is why Vong Fong is expected to turn more toward the north over the next 12 to 24 hours However, the strongest westerly to easterly steering flow is still well to the north of the typhoon. That is why we're not expecting Vong Fong to make a hard right-hand turn toward the northeast out to sea anytime soon. Instead, the ridge is more than likely going to make a temporary comeback within 72 to 96 hours, which will induce the slight bend to the north-northwest before finally being picked up by the westerly mid-latitude steering wind. And this scenario is still being shown in the latest forecast model guidance. We have nearly unanimous agreement amongst some of the major models. This is a look at the latest ECMWF European model run. You see Japan here, Typhoon Vongfong to the south, the mid-level steering ridge to the east. And as we advance this into the next 24 and 48 hours, the ridge is still not doing much. It's still well off to the east of the typhoon, so Vongfong is moving toward the north. But as we go into 72 and 96 hours, the ridging tries to make a return to the northwest. And you see that even more so between 96 and 120 hours. This is when the storm is expected to be moving into Okinawa and the Kyushu Islands. And we are looking at around Sunday afternoon and evening. This is going to be the peak time where the winds and the conditions are going to be the worst. But do not dismiss the threat also on Saturday. We're probably still going to be looking at rather strong winds even by Saturday afternoon. So if you're in this area, make your typhoon preparations, get those finalized by Friday because conditions will be steadily going downhill throughout the day on Saturday before a potential direct hit on the day on Sunday. Now as we advance into Monday, you can see here the storm is really losing its definition as it gets picked up by a trough over southern Japan. At this point we're looking at more of a flooding threat as the winds will have diminished significantly, but that flooding threat cannot be dismissed much at all because that also can be very dangerous. Finally, this is a zoomed in look at the European model surface winds forecast for Sunday afternoon. This is the time when the model has the typhoon passing directly through some of these smaller islands. It still has the center passing to the north of Naha, but even if this run were to verify, you're looking at at least bare minimum moderately strong tropical storm or minimal typhoon force winds coming in from the north and northwest. And it should be noted that the American GFS model is even farther west than this solution, indicating the potential that a direct hit on Naha is still 
in the realm of possibility. So anywhere along these southern islands, you need to be making preparations for a moderate to strong typhoon landfall. That is all for this hour. For more updates like this one, you can check out 28storms.com slash typhoon where all of these videos end up. We also have videos being embedded by our partners from westernpacificweather.com. They do a very good job with their video analysis. In fact, they are exclusive to the Western Pacific, so they are very good at what they do. And if you want to check out the storm on your own, you can follow all of the links that are available at 28storms.com slash typhoon on the right-hand side of the page. These tabs open up and you see even more links to official sources out there in the Western Pacific. So you may want to check that out. Anyway, be safe out there, especially if you're within southern Japan and stay tuned for more information.